we were looking at the aging brain and we were trying to understand why Alzheimer's disease affects more women than men. We know today that out of every three patients affected by Alzheimer's disease, two are women. And frankly, we've known this for a long time, since 1994. And the question was always, is it just that women live longer than men? Or is there something more that could really explain this two to one ratio, where out of every three patients, two are women, which really means that for every man suffering from Alzheimer's disease, there are two women. Is there something about women that can explain why Alzheimer's disease affects more women than men? And the answer was almost al always, well, sweetheart, women live longer than men, and Alzheimer's disease is a disease of old age, so unfortunately, more women than men end up with Alzheimer's disease. And then a lot of my research and other people's research has clarified that Alzheimer's disease is not a disease of old age. Alzheimer's is a disease of middle age, it's a disease of midlife that starts in the brain, that creates negative changes in the brain in midlife with symptoms that appear or become clinically evident in late life. So that completely changed the question. The question then became, ah, so what happens to women and not to men in midlife that could potentially link to the increased risk of Alzheimer's disease? And by studying this connection, we actually landed on menopause. We were studying middle-aged individuals, men and women. And middle age is any age between 35 and 65, so it's a wide 30-year gap. And we have women in the study, we have men in the study. And we use a lot of brain imaging techniques to look at the way that the brain ages over time, to look at whether or not there is shrinkage over time, to look at metabolic activity, energy levels, blood flow, and presence of Alzheimer's plaques in the brain of people who are fairly young. So it's a tricky thing to do. But we have the techniques, we have the technology, we can do that. And then if you compare the brains of women, middle-aged, midlife women, and midlife men, very consistently, we have shown time and time again that the women exhibit signs of an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease in their brains. There's a little bit more shrinkage. The gray matter is losing a little bit of volume. Blood flow to the brain is changing brain energy levels are changing, and there are more Alzheimer's plaques. This is not to say that these individuals have dementia or have Alzheimer's disease. These are risk factors for Alzheimer's disease. They're red flags. And we looked at a number of factors. We started with age, and there's really we could not find any strong correlation with aging alone. So then we look at genetic risk factors. So if you're premenopausal, you have a regular cycle, you have no hot flashes, no symptoms of menopause, your brain is broadly the same level of energy and activity and structure and whatnot than a, man, a man's brain of your same age. But as you start going through menopause, during perimenopause, which is a transitional phase, during which we start skipping periods and the hot flashes really make an appearance and the brain fog and the memory lapses and the anxiety or the depression, then your brain starts changing in ways that, sure, there is a bit of an aging component, but I think the hormonal changes are very clear because we work with women who are fairly young when do they go through menopause and we work with women who are older as they go through menopause, and it's not their age that predicts their brain health or their brain changes, it's really the stage of menopause that they're at.